I think before starting talking about fundamental interactions, it, it would be it's worth describing actually what the words mean um, in the context I use them. So uh, maybe interactions is simple, it just means when two things, instead of just going their own way, they, they affect each other in some way. So particles scatter off each other or electrons stick to a, a, a nucleus and make an atom. So that's an, interact an attractive force or a repulsive force or a bouncing off of something. That's what we mean by interaction. Um, fundamental is, is a little more um, kind of maybe loaded, a bit more philosophically loaded. Um, Particle physicists, when we talk about fundamental, um, really we mean stuff that we haven't seen any deeper layer of structure than this. This is so it's always a little provisional, right? Because we don't, you never know. If you build a bigger experiment, um, you may see something different. So, for instance, we've, we've known about electrons for more than a hundred years. Um, they were discovered in J.J. Thomson in Cambridge, um, just a bit towards the end of the nineteenth century, um, and. We, as far as we know, they're fundamental, and what we mean by that is in over a hundred years we've never built an experiment that managed to break an electron, never, never managed to smash an electron into pieces, never managed to resolve any kind of internal structure. As far as we can tell, they're infinitely small, very weird idea that you have infinitely small particles, but they are, as far as we can see, that's what they are. Um, so we call that a fundamental particle. And over the, the, over the time, you know, we've had there was a time when people thought the proton was fundamental, but as you turn up the power of your experiment, you see that and it's not. It's got things inside it, it's got quarks inside it. and So you always have to bear in mind that if you build a better experiment, you might find the electron actually isn't fundamental after all, there is something. But what we really mean is provisionally, when we say a force or a particle is fundamental, we mean it's, it's not made up of smaller constituents, it's not there are forces like friction, for instance, is not a fundamental force. Friction is, is a real force, you can feel it, you know, you, you can't move, it keeps the car on the road, you know, you know it's real, but what friction is actually really is a manifest, you can break friction down if you look at it microscopically, you can say friction is, is actually a manifestation of the electromagnetic force because it's when the, the materials are rubbing against each other and there are interactions, electromagnetic interactions between the electrons and the, and the atomic nuclei in the two materials, in the car tyre and the road, that is what's providing the friction. So friction is not a fundamental force, it's a kind of large-scale manifestation of the electromagnetic force. So that's what we mean by fundamental. If you try and break that force down any further, can you do? Can you break it down any further or is, does it stop? So uh, electromagnetism is one of the fundamental forces as far as we know, and it's carried by photons, which are essentially the particle of light. Um, but photons are also responsible for magnetic fields, they're responsible for the attraction between um, unlike electric charges, they're responsible for friction in the end because they're responsible for, for, this, um, for the electromagnetic force between materials as they rub against each other. In particle physics we know of two other fundamental forces um, it, that together combine to make what we call the standard model of particle physics. One of them is um, called the strong nuclear force and it's the one that binds the atomic nucleus together. So if you think about it, um, an atomic nucleus, let's say a helium nucleus, has got two protons and two neutrons. The protons have got electric charge, in fact they've got, both got positive electric charge. So according to the electromagnetic force they must be pushing each other away, they must be repelling really strongly. They're really you know, crammed together in the nucleus and they're trying to get away from each other according to the, the electromagnetic force. So there must be some other force that's keeping them in the nucleus because the helium doesn't fly away, it's very, very stable. Um, and that's the, you can just make it up and call it the strong force. That's what people did, there must be some other force. Now we have a deep understanding of that force as a fundamental force. It's a bit like the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is carried by particles we call gluons, which are the equivalent of the photon. Um, and that is, is a fundamental force between quarks, basically, and that's what makes the quarks stick together to make a proton and it's also what keeps the protons together inside an atomic nucleus. And then the third force in the standard model is called the weak nuclear force and it's, quite, it's often quite hard to, to say what that does really because it's, it's not really seen as a force. Um, it's, not, it's very short range, it only operates within the, within the atomic nucleus so it dies away before you get out there. And it doesn't really bind anything together. You say, what's the point of a force that doesn't bind anything together? But it's a force in the sense of it's an interaction, this fundamental interaction. 
um, in that, uh, for instance, um, you can have something, say, a, a quark, um, can, so an up quark and a down quark, um, actually an up quark and an anti-down quark, can fuse together and produce a W boson, which is a carrier of, of the, um, the weak force. And then that can decay to give you an electron and a neutrino. So you've suddenly taken what was constituents of, of a, a nuclear matter and made them into electrons and neutrinos. And this is absolutely key in the fusion interactions of the sun. It's, how, it's basically how heavy particles decay into lighter particles most of the time. So it's, a real, it's, it's not seen really as a binding force, but it's a very, very important fundamental interaction because without it, the sun wouldn't burn, for instance. So it's kind of key that way. So those are the, the three um, fundamental forces of the standard model. There's a kind of elephant in the room, which is the reason we're staying in the room because um, we're not floating up, which is gravity, which is also a fundamental force. Um, as far as we know, and is also and, and is not really is, doesn't really feature in the standard model. Um, and the reason for that is actually because it's super weak. You, 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 we call the weak force weak, but actually compared to it, the, the, the gra gravity is hugely weaker. And that sounds like kind of counterintuitive thing to say because gravity is actually the first force we're aware of. Um, because it, and, but the only reason it's the first, the two reasons that it's the first force, the most obvious force that we're aware of. One is that it's cumulative, so there's no negative charges in gravity, as far as we know. So the electromagnetic force has, um, of, of the, the Earth has um, as many positives as negatives, so they cancel each other out. So we don't see a net um, electromagnetic force from the Earth. But all the matter in the Earth, whether it's positively charged or negatively charged, all has the same gravitational attraction, so it kind of adds up. So the, the reasons that gravity is obvious are so one, it's cumulative, it doesn't cancel itself out like the other forces do, and two, we live near a very big mass, we're on, on a big planet, and so we, 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 uh, that all the gravitational attraction of the Earth is, is, um, comes, comes together and, we, and it holds us on the Earth, and also of course we see the Earth going around the Sun, which is an even bigger gravitational attractor. But think about it, that um, what is it that makes my muscles work? It's the electromagnetic force, basically, it's chemistry, so it's all governed by the swapping of electrons between various complicated molecules, that's what makes your muscles contract and things. So that's those tiny little atomic scale interactions that drive my muscles can pick this pen up against the whole massive gravitational attraction of the whole of the Earth. Right, so it shows you how much stronger the electromagnetic force is than, than gravity. So, so although gravity is, is there in the background and clearly very important, it's on the, on the scale of particle physics experiments where you see interactions between particles, with, between electrons, because of, with the same force that's driving my muscles, the, the gravitational force is so much weaker than that that it just doesn't infect, impact on our experiments at all. So the, the, that's, that's a bit, it's a bit tricky because it makes it, first of all it means we can ignore it and understand particle physics without um, worrying about gravity, but it also makes it very hard to study actually what is gravity and how is it fundamentally going on. Um, Einstein of course had put together what is still the current theory of gravity which is called general relativity and it's completely different from the other three forces. Um, they are quantum forces based on symmetries um, Einstein's um, theory is kind of based on symmetry, but it's not a, it's not a quantum force. And, and what it is, it's actually based on geometry, and it treats space as kind of a smooth sheet, uh, almost a substance, that, that, um, that ma energy and mass will, will bend it. And then that bending, um, they follow kind of straight lines, but on the newly bent space-time. And that space-time is what we see. That's why the Earth goes in an orbit around the Sun. It's because the Sun is bending space-time so that actually the Earth thinks it's going in a straight line, but it's not because it's going in a straight line on bent space-time. Um, and that's what we're, we're doing. Our, our, that's, that's our theory of gravity. And it's a fundamental theory, but it's not a quantum theory. And we know that if you go small enough in nature, nature behaves like quantum mechanics. It behaves not in this kind of continuous, smooth, classical analogy. The, 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 uh, the objects that you have to deal with are quantum objects. Um, the atom would, if the atom was like a solar system, um, they, well, it couldn't be. It wouldn't look like that at all. So this this idea of the the atom is a nucleus with electrons going around it is a classical analogy of the sun 
with the Earth going around it. It just doesn't work. You have to treat the electron as a quantum object. You have to treat the nucleus as a quantum object in order to make these things stable at small distances. So we know that you can't just take gravity and, and, and expect gravity to still operate at very high energies and very small distances. We know that it must have some aspect of quantum mechanics playing a role, but we don't know how. There are various theoretical ideas of people working on loop quantum gravity and string theories way beyond my, um, my comprehension because I'm an experimentalist. I don't do that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, there, there are people trying to have ideas of how you can bring together gravity and quantum mechanics. Probably means that you'll have to modify both of them. There's probably lessons to be learned on both sides from it. From this, it may be that neither of them are really the right thing. That neither of them are really all the interactions that we think are fundamental at the moment. Just may not be. There may be some deeper layer of structure that we don't understand. But um, but we don't know at the moment, and we're, it's very hard to investigate experimentally because gravity is so weak. But things like this discovery of gravitational waves is a massive breakthrough. They're predicted by general relativity, but the fact that we can see what is essentially like light from the stars, but it's not coming from a wobbling electromagnetic field, but from the wobbling of space-time. It's just fantastic. Um, and what that might reveal about you know, the population of black holes in the universe and how they behave and how, what that might tell us. Um, there's hope that, we, well, there's still a lot more to learn and there's hope that at some point we'll, we'll get some clues either from the mathematical and theory side or from actual data as to how um, gravity and quantum mechanics come together. There's actually ideas that even here in this building you could build now because we understand quantum mechanics so much better that maybe you can build um, quantum systems that are so precise that they can actually start detecting gravitational waves and maybe that's getting to the point where we start actually seeing the quantum effects of gravity uh, even maybe you don't need the huge large hadron colliders and things to do that maybe you can do it with these very precise things. But it's an unknown, it's the Wild West. We're off the map there as well. <laughs>